Well, I've no idea this is going to be a tasty video, or it's not going to be a tasty video, essentially. Anyway, let's, uh, ah, park distance control doesn't work. Auto PDC, toy me perkele. Basically, in Finnish, that means automatic parking isn't working. Automatic parking is uh, this. Oh, I'm going to put heated seats on, boys and girls. I'm freezing my Shibuya Jacksons off. So, the first thing we'll do, as ever, is, oh, excuse me, we'll put on BMW Vista, the battery support, and read the fault codes. It's a, it's a sensor fault or a wiring fault, so parking manoeuvring assistant, front left sensor, final oscillation, don't worry about all that rubbish. Basically, it's a, it's a faulty sensor, no response, faulty sensor, four fault codes. Well, traditional BMW is the 1970s technology, fantastic. It's so basic, it's a joke. So yeah, we've got an X, X means it don't work. Front side left. Now, let's have a look at something now. Has it got accident damage or has it just got water ingress? Is it the wiring or is it the sensor? Tonic sensors, they're about 100 quid each. We don't have them in stock and you have to paint them usually. So what's the easiest thing to do to take this bloody hat off? What's the easiest thing to do? Well, the easiest thing to do is quite simple, isn't it? We're going to just swap them around. So here's our effective, effective sensor. And when BMW is a short to ground, it can also mean open circuit. It doesn't differentiate. There's no accident damages there. Sensor looks tasty. There's no signs of any impact. But it's in a bad location, isn't it? A lot of water and crap can go in there. So the easiest thing to do now is literally take this out, inspect it and swap it with the other side. What transfers then? My morning's going to be easy, I can go for a quick brew. <sighs> it's full of salt, look at bloody steak, grit and salt all over the damn thing. The trouble with BMWs is that they can't differentiate between a shorted sensor, wires shorted together, or open circuits, as in like, not connected. They give the same fault code. Front left sensor, open, slash, short to ground. Or slash, short to battery voltage. They don't know the difference, they just know there's a fault, so it's up to you to find out. Is it open? Is it shorted to ground? Is it shorted to power? Is it shorted to each other? So BMW way of doing this is they want you to visually inspect the bumpers, attention paid to correct locking, push back pins, bent pins, contact bushes, water ingress, corrosion, loose contact. Carry out a voltage measurement of the supply line. So, as a fault finder, am I going to do all that? No, I'm not, because it's a crock of bull. And this is the problem. Young people coming in are going to have no idea. They're going to read this bullshit test plan and go, Ooh, I need to do all these measurements. You know what? Why don't we rent the oscilloscope out? So, fortunately, or unfortunately for me, maybe fortunately, there is a wiring fault on it. So, what we've done by swapping the sensors from left to right, we haven't done shit. We? But what we have done is we've made sure that there's nothing wrong with the sensor because they're about 150 quid each, I think. So, and plus painting on top of that, the paint costs money as well. So, what we've done, we've managed to put it to the other side. The fault hasn't migrated, so the fault hasn't gone from that side to that side. So, we haven't got a dodgy sensor, have we? So, we've not lost anything. It took like two minutes, it took nothing. We need to now start measuring. What's the best way of measuring? The easiest thing to do, usually, is connect the sensors and then back pin it and check the right side because the right side's the same type of sensor so we need to make sure we have the same values on the left one as we have on the right one so you through this sensor really fast the yellow is a power supply this one here is a ground and this is your signal output so we should have a voltage here we should have a ground here and we should have a signal output here 12 volts and our ground should just be a ground obviously Turn that off. So battery voltage is ground, and then what's our signal going to look like? Let's see. Obviously, it's going to change because it's a signal line, but we've got some voltage there. Now we need to compare that to the other side, essentially. Yeah, got battery voltage on there. So straight away we've got exactly the same as the other side. So there's nothing wrong with the ground and power. What about the signal wire? Because it's moaning about and that's the middle one. We've got 12 volts. 
it's a bit higher than the other side which was 10 volts so what we need to do is we need to disconnect this and then see because we're going to have a signal here because the sensor's plugged in but now we've just got a bare wire let's now check it out so we've got zero volts on there so let's now compare that with the other side disconnected it's not zero volts there's nothing at all there's no ground on it and that's the problem it's open basically it's infinite resistance just thought i'd clarify that hi friends is your smoking gun you've got a ground on it when it's disconnected on the middle wire the middle wire is a signal well we don't have a ground when it's disconnected to be on the other side what does that mean it means because there's nothing and it's dead the wire's broken it's as simple as that you're going to get voltage between on the signal wire when it's plugged in because you're measuring it at source when it's disconnected you don't have a sensor and the sensor can't sort of feed any type of signal out of it back down that line can it when there's nothing plugged in i'm just grabbing a quick brew now from our schmiedman coffee machine what do i need to do now well first of all it's the 31st it's the end of the year the guy wants his car back today I have another job after that but that car don't have to leave today so i might be able to fix this today what am i going to do well let me show you Right, here's a rudimentary wiring diagram, part distance control unit, control unit basically, ECU. Our affected sensor, which was the front left sensor, yeah? Got three pins on it as I've shown you. The first, pin one and three, the first two pins are okay. The ground is okay, and by the way, that feeds to the other five sensors on the bumper, as does the 12 volt signal on pin one. That goes to the other five sensors, they're all connected. This part of the circuit now is okay. So in theory, you can disregard that part of the circuit. When you're starting out in fault finding, so you don't get confused with big complicated wiring diagrams. If you know there's not wrong with one part of the circuit, get a finished magazine like that <laughs> and simplify it. And all you're left with is the signal wire. And that way you can concentrate on not being stressed. And then you know, ah, I've got, all I have to do is check the wire between pin two and pin 17. So I didn't have to go actually go that far and I actually didn't realize but the wiring for this one actually goes in the car that way, which is quite unusual. So I'm glad I pulled the bumper off to get to it. So what's happened is in the past, someone, you can't quite see, but they've pinched that and they've trapped it when they've put the bumper on, even from the factory maybe. And it's been trapped somewhere here and it's been rubbing. But that's the good thing. So what we can do now is we can now burr this back and see what condition the wiring's in. And what I'll do now is I'm going to pull this off now. And luckily we've got lovely clean metal, so we don't need, we can repair it there basically. You're probably wondering why I have this collection of like crap in my corner because connectors are really expensive and they're also a bit of a pain in the bum to find which connector you need. So I visually identify it. And not only do I have a new connector, I also have a brand new ceiling plug as well and it's pretty much the same sort of size so all I need to do with that now is cut it off and I've got a nice genuine wiring connector I don't need to stress about it so essentially all I need to do with this now is I've pulled my locking tab off get our dodgy signal wire pull it out chuck it away get our new one we know it's the right one get the orientation correct and you kill two birds with one shibula, don't you? Which, let's be honest, he's always hand it. Oh, look at that click. That click always makes me happy. And now we've got a lovely sealed end. And everyone's happy. I've accused of being like a barbarian using mole grips, but I, use, I used to have some crimping pliers, but for me, I just don't trust anything. And when I do the mole grips, I know for a fact it's a perfect job and they're never ever going to come loose. I love these connectors because you heat them up and they have a good seal on them. Also, I just need to just make sure everything's... Give it a tug like that and you can't go wrong. Right, so we can put our sensor back in now because we're not wrong with sensors, is there? We've already established that. Now we just need to build it all up, obviously, to make that look better. Plug it all in and hopefully my morning's done then. No dudes. Non-existento, baby. Oh, it's a very sunny day. There's literally no uh, snow anymore. <laughs> it's quite reasonable. It's now warmed up to probably plus one or minus one or something like that. It's not really cold. So it's fixed. This is my last kind of job of the year. I've got another one next. I'll probably not video that because it's just a boring sus uh, suspension one and I've done enough of them. 
So that, I hope you've learned something from that. Have a good one.